Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and we all know Pop! OS is one of the best Linux distributions based on Ubuntu. Luckily, Pop! OS is bringing a lot of people into the Linux community, and that is great. But a lot of those people might want to explore with this, but they need to keep their Windows operating system available. And the best way to do that is to set up dual booting. And that is exactly what we're going to cover in this video. So without wasting time, let's jump onto the Windows machine and start the setup process to be able to do this. So here I have the Etcher website open. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and download this tool. It will allow you to burn the ISO that we're about to download onto a USB drive. That way you can boot directly to that USB and install the operating system. So you can either download it right here if you want to install it on your system, but if you do click this arrow, you will have an option to download a portable version, which is nice if you only plan on using it once or you just want to be able to move it around easily. After you get that, you're going to want to go over to the Pop! OS website right here and download it. Once you click download, you will be given two options. One is the regular download and the other is a download with NVIDIA drivers preloaded. So if you do have a NVIDIA GPU, you should really go with this version because it will help you out later down the road, especially during the installation process to prevent some problems that may occur. So download the Pop! OS that will fit your system and then move on to the next step. And that next step is we're going to make our life a little bit easier down the road. Uh, when we get into Pop! OS, we could do this there, but sometimes there's issues with unmounting certain drives. So we're actually going to create the partition that we're going to be installing Linux on through Windows. Not create it, but do the initial separation process. So we're going to go into the Start menu. I'm going to search for Disk, and you're going to open up the Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions tool. So go ahead and open that up, and here you will see the disks you have available. The first one, disk zero, that should be the one your system is on. You can see here it's the C drive and this is the only drive that's not removable in my system. So I know it's the one I want. And I want to install it alongside Windows. Well, I want to install Pop! OS alongside Windows. So this is the partition that I'm going to end up splitting to be able to do this. So to split it and create some free space to install Linux, you're just going to want to right click on that and click on shrink volume. Now like I said, shrinking the volume will make the uh, Windows partition smaller so you have free space. You can see right here the total size before shrink is the current size of the hard drive. The size available for shrink space is how much free space is in the hard drive. And then this one right here, the number that you can actually adjust is how much free space you want to create. So be careful when you're doing this because you do want to make sure you leave enough hard drive space for your Windows installation. So this is a 250 gig hard drive. I'm only using about 20 or 30 gigabytes of space. I'm going to leave myself at least 50, 60 gigabytes of space, but I'm just going to basically give myself just under 100 gigabytes for Linux. So let's go with 100,000 megabytes. You can see that gives the Linux distribution 100,000 and it will leave the uh, Windows with 843,000 megabytes. If I go ahead and click shrink, you can see a visualization of that. It essentially, not essentially, but it kind of cuts it in half here, giving Windows the bigger file system and Linux about 100 gigabytes. And you can do this as you see fit for whatever your personal needs are. So once you do that, you can go ahead and open up Etcher and actually burn that ISO that we downloaded onto the USB. So you just click flash from file, select, go into the directory that the ISO is in, select it, open it, and here if it automatically selects it, you could click on change just to ensure that it's going to flash to the right USB. I only have one and it's a 16 gigabyte one, so I will be okay. You need at least a four gigabyte USB to be able to do this because Pop! OS is, I believe around 2.3 gigabytes in size. So the four is a good base, but it's always good to have an eight or a 16 gigabyte laying around. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on flash. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna copy all the files to that ISO, as well as make it an actual bootable image. Once it's done flashing everything over, it's going to go ahead and validate to make sure the installation went correctly. And then when that's all done, we could go ahead and basically restart our system and boot into the 
uh, USB drive. Now I will note, I will have a uh, link down below to an article on techhut.tv that will go over some potential issues that you could have as well as some settings you might want to change in your BIOS. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and power off this computer and go ahead and boot into this USB. So now we're about to turn on our computer and all computers are different with getting into the uh, boot screen. Some is escape, some computers use F12 but you're going to have to pay attention to the splash screen on your computer and see what you need to hit to get in. For me, mine was pressing enter. Then here I have the option F12 to choose a temporary startup device. I'm going to go ahead and hit F12. And then from here, it's going to give me the option to boot into either my hard drive or a USB HDD, which that's the USB we just flashed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when you do start up Ubuntu, it's going to look a little bit weird. This is all normal. This is the general startup procedure, but it visualizes it. So if you do run into any issues, you can actually see where it went wrong. So that is a good thing. Uh, you know that it's about done because eventually you'll be able to see the cursor and the pop OS splash screen will come up. So there's that cursor I was just talking about, and there is the pop OS splash screen. So now we're going to go ahead and dive on into Pop! OS and get everything set up. All right, now we are in the Pop! OS installation. So you're going to want to go ahead and select whatever language that you need. Go ahead and select United States if that's what you are or where you are. And then let's select keyboard uh, layout for English and then uh, default English keyboard layout. And here is where we're going to do some customization. Uh, you can do a clean install if you want to. If you want a clean install of Pop! OS with no Windows partition, you go ahead and do that. But this video is all about dual booting. So we're going to go ahead into the custom section and then go to custom. And then here, your device is running on battery. How good am I? I should be okay. Uh, generally, you're going to want to plug it in, but I have 80%, so I'll be fine. We're going to ignore this for now. And then you can see here are my partitions. You see that these are NTFS, meaning that these are all window partitions. We saw these earlier. This right here is my main windows, and these are recovery and uh, some system, system partitions. But we're going to be installing Pop! OS on this unused area. So we're going to go down and go to Modify Partitions, and we are going to format that free space we made earlier as the Linux file system. So that is this right here, the 97.66 gigabytes. We're going to right click on that and click on new. And here we're going to want to make sure the file system is the ext4. We are going to have the free space as at zero and take up the full size available. Click add. And then that will make that new partition. Uh, if you click that link in the description, there'll be a couple other things such as um, creating a virtual RAM and uh, for older systems or for older operating systems, you might want to create a separate partition for booting. But for this, you don't really need to do that. But once you have all this set up, you can go ahead and click this check, click apply, and then it's going to go ahead and format that section of the partition to the Linux file system. Once it's all done, you can go ahead and close that out, close this out, and then you can see here that it created the partition under the ext4 file system. You're going to want to go ahead and give that a click, slide the use this partition, and we're going to go ahead and format that, and we're going to do it as a root. The thing I was talking about earlier with the virtual RAM is swap, boot, and home. You could do a Quite a few different things in this, but the just base clean install is to use root. And then when you're all done, click out of that box, it will be checked, and then click on erase and install. And now what this is going to do is it's going to go through the entire installation process. I am going to fast forward here a little bit. Uh, when it's all done, you'll see a screen that will allow you to keep playing around with it or restart your system. And then when we do restart our system, it's going to give us options to set up our user profile, our username or password, things like that. But make sure you stay tuned to the end because by default, this does not have a bootloader that can recognize Windows in the way that it's being installed. So when we get into the final install and reboot our system after this install, we're going to need to run some commands and install a good bootloader. 
and stay tuned and I will show you that right once this is done. And then when it's completely done with the installation, you'll have this screen right here. It will give you the option to either restart the device or shut down. You could continue to playing around in the live disk, but for now we are going to go ahead and stop this and restart our system. All right, so we go ahead and click restart this device then it will completely shut down. And when you first boot up, you're gonna notice that it did not give you the option to boot into Windows 10. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and go through this initial setup process and then um, run a couple commands so it will give us the option to boot into either Pop! OS or Windows. So it will be back with a better recording once I get this fully um, set up. All right, now that we are in Pop! OS, we need to set this up so it recognizes Windows on boot. And to do that, first what we need to do is open up the terminal here. And once your terminal is open, we're gonna just do a general system update. So sudo apt update, just like that. Hit enter, it's gonna ask for your password. And then it will update all the repositories on your system. That may take a little bit, uh, just depends on how old the ISO was when you downloaded it. But now this is actually going to take a while, so we're going to do sudo apt upgrade. And that is going to actually upgrade everything on your computer. And now this might take a while because it's often that it needs to download a couple gigabytes worth of things. And once everything fully upgrades, you're going to want to install the SO Prober. So we're going to type in sudo, oops, sudo apt install os prober just like that it's going to add the repository install it. it won't take any time at all and then once you're all done with that you're going to want to run it so sudo uh, os prober and you'll see there that it does recognize windows uh, recognizes the windows installation if it that does not show up you've ran into an issue but you shouldn't have any issues it should say windows 10 there if you did everything properly so with this now recognized we are going to update the uh, grub the bootloader so sudo update dash grub hit enter and then it will use the data it collected from the os prober to update the bootloader now we are going to go ahead close this out and we're going to check to make sure that it gives us the option to boot into windows all right so we are going to go ahead and turn on this computer and check out what this bootloader screen looks like and boot into windows 10 just so i can show you guys that it worked successfully so turning on the computer will result in a uh, blue screen that comes up that is the uh, grub bootloader that we installed you aren't going to have to hit any buttons quickly like before to boot into the USB drive, but it is still good to know how to do that kind of thing. Uh, right here is the bootloader itself. If you don't hit any buttons, it will boot to pop by default, but you can see here this is the uh, GNU Grub bootloader, and we have the options for both uh, pop, OS, and Windows 10. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and boot on into Windows 10. And boom, we can see here that it has successfully booted into Windows 10 with the Pop! OS installation running alongside it. And that about wraps up this video. Here's Windows 10 running in full force. I do have a video up on the screen right now of the five things you must do, in my opinion, when you install Pop! OS. So go ahead and check out that video. It is very helpful. I also have a playlist right there with all other Linux type videos if you're interested. I hope you have a great day. If this tutorial has helped you out in any sort of way, give that a thumbs up. Check the link in the description for uh, a more in-depth guide, written tutorial with all of the commands and everything you need to know to be able to do this. You have a great day and goodbye.